Hey guys, welcome to another video. If you're new here, thanks for joining. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a story time about the time that I stole a car and got put on probation and then got sent away to juvie. There's a lot of stuff to unpack in this video, so let's get into it. So in order to set the scene for all of these events that happened in my life, I need to kind of walk you through how I got there. So it started when I was 12 years old. I used to be like super big in the church. My family was never really religious or anything, but my mom always gave me the option to go to church if I wanted to and stuff like that. When I was 12 years old, I found this youth group in town and I went there every single Wednesday and it was honestly my favorite place to go. I got really into the church. I got really into the Bible. I ended up getting baptized in 2014. Um, in front of the whole church it was crazy and it was incredible but yeah so I was like going into middle school at this point and I started making new friends and I met this one girl let's call her Chloe I knew her from my old school because I used to move back and forth a lot between my mom and my dad because I never really got along with my parents and so I knew her from my old school that I went to when I lived with my dad and she had just moved to town and she was like the new girl. So we kind of became friends and I invited her to our youth group. So I got her to come to this youth group and after that we literally just started hanging out all the time. She became one of my bestest friends. But she was also into like partying and just doing a lot of crazy stuff that I really was not, I'd never done before. So she was friends with this other girl and we would go hang out with her and her other friend was like not really a good influence. So she, so she would bring us to parties in like this bigger city nearby and mind you, we're like 14 at this time. We were hanging out with like 28 year olds for no reason, should not have been there. And my mom found out because I wasn't going to school. I would stay out all night and not come home not even tell my mom that I wasn't coming home I was just doing a lot of things that I should not have been doing and so as any good mother would she told me that she didn't want me hanging out with Chloe anymore because obviously I was just getting in all this trouble and as a 14 year old I just thought that my mom was just being unfair that she just didn't like my friend and that she just had an issue for no reason as any 14 year old would think. So I continued to do what any other 14 year old would do, or so I thought, which was ignore what my mom said and just keep hanging out with my friend because she's my friend. And we continued getting into a lot of trouble together, skipping school and just doing like crazy things. So Chloe's dad had this girlfriend and they ended up breaking up, but this said girlfriend had two daughters who were around Chloe's age. So they kind of talked here and there. And one of the daughters gave Chloe a spare key to her mother's car because me and this girl Chloe would like take her mom's car sometimes and go see her other friend. But we never like took anybody else's cars. And so one of the daughters gave her a spare key to her mom's car and was like, listen, if you take my mom's car in the middle of the night, she wouldn't even notice. And so Chloe used to take her car all the time. So like she would text me randomly and say, you know, there's this party going on. I'm going to come pick you up. And so I would meet her and she would pick me up in this said car. So that happened a couple times. And then one night it was in February. So set the scene for the night that the car was stolen. There was snow all over the place and we already knew that we were gonna take the car because we wanted to go hang out with some friends. And so we told her mom that we were going to walk to the movie store to get some movies because it was late at night and there was really no reason for us to be walking out in a blizzard. And so her mom let us go. And so we walked past the house where the car was and they were still up, like the lights were still on and stuff. So we walked to the movie store because we had to actually get movies so that we could show her mom that that's what we did. And so on the way back out, it was later, it was probably like 11 o'clock or midnight, somewhere around there. 
So we're like, well, by this time she's definitely sleeping. So we walk back over to the house and the lights were off. So I kept walking and Chloe got the car and came and picked me up. And we went to go hang out with those friends and they weren't answering the phone. So we were just kind of driving around town. And then Chloe was like, I think we should go drive back by the house. And because I just have a feeling like she just had a really bad feeling about us taking the car this time. And so we drive back past the house and her dad's ex-girlfriend is literally standing in the doorway of her house doors open like there's just like a screen door she's standing there on the phone we already know she's on the phone with the cops and she literally watches us drive past literally watches us drive past like so i make eye contact with her i'm like oh my god like she literally just saw us drive past in her car as she's on the phone with the cops like what we pull into a nearby parking lot and we end up just taking off on foot because we know that we're going to get in trouble. And we're 14 at the time, not thinking. It's literally snowing. So we're literally taking off on foot from this car in the snow. Okay. These cops tracked our footprints from the car to where we were hiding. And we sat there for like 45 minutes. And then once we came outside to like finally walked to her house because we thought like the coast was clear the cops pulled up and so she had put the spare key that we had in this like blue mailbox like those postal mailboxes that are all over town and so we both get put in two separate cop cars and the cops are like asking us questions you know where were we what are we doing and we're just like we're just walking back from the movie store officer and so he's like Oh, that's weird because we have, you know, people saying that they saw you guys have this car and that you guys took off, you know, whatever. And so we're just like, oh, that's weird, you know, whatever. And I couldn't hear what they were saying to her, but they were talking to her first. And then I heard over the radio, they were like, she said the, the key is in the mailbox in the apartment building or whatever. And so then they come over to my car that I'm sitting in and they're like, she won't tell us where the key is. Will you tell us where the key is? And I'm like, I literally just heard you on the radio say exactly where the key is. And so the officer looks at the other officer and they both are like, so they look back at me and they're like, is that where the key is? And I'm like, yeah, that's where the key is. So they ended up having to get the key somehow, like with the postal office the next morning or something. So they ended up just bringing us home and I was terrified to go home because one, this night specifically, I literally convinced my mom to just let me stay the night at her house that we weren't going to get in trouble, that we were just going to have a normal night. And then literally I had the cops bringing me home at like one, two o'clock in the morning being like, we just found your daughter stealing a car. We got a court date. We had to go to court for this car. And apparently there was a bunch of damage done to the vehicle, which I later found out that Chloe had taken the car previously with another friend and they were letting these guys ride on the top of the car and just do a bunch of stupid, ridiculous stuff. But I ended up having to pay half the damage, which was like over a thousand dollars as a 14 year old. And then in between the time that I stole the car and court, I just kept skipping school. Um, my mom had to put me on pins, which is person in need of supervision. Um, I think every county has that. It's basically just like probation for kids, just like somebody that watches you, make sure you're going to school, doing what you're supposed to be doing, listening to your parents, whatever. And so my mom put me on pins, but it really didn't do anything. I never talked to my officer. I just kept doing what I was doing in the first place. And so when court came up, they sent me away to this group home for like a week until my next court date. And I was literally bawling. I was so upset because I thought I was gonna go away for a year and I didn't wanna be away from my friends or my family. And I was just like terrified, honestly. So 
I wrote this big long letter to read to the judge because I was like, I am not staying here. So went back to court a week later, I read it to the judge and he was like, you know what, we'll give you another chance. Meanwhile, my friend got sent away for a week and then she went back to court and she got sent away for a year. Like they sent her away, they did not give her another chance. So they gave me another chance. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, like, thank God. And so I go home and I just start doing exactly what I was doing before. I was hanging out with other friends, not even Chloe anymore because she was gone for a year. And yeah, I was just still being terrible because I was bored and didn't know what to do. And honestly, I had a lot of trouble at home because there was a lot of domestic violence in my household at the time between my mom and my stepdad. And it was just a very toxic place for me to be at in, at that time. So I kind of just did things to distract myself from what was going on in my home life. So yeah, they give me another chance. I keep doing what I'm doing and then they end up putting me on probation so that it's a little bit more strong and like if I don't do what I'm supposed to do, I'm going to get sent away. I kept not doing what I was supposed to be doing. I don't know why. Like, I don't know why it never clicked that like you're literally going to go away for a year. But I guess I really didn't care that much because I just kept doing what I was doing. So after like a month of doing that, I went back to court. My probation officer told them that I was not doing anything that I was supposed to be doing. So essentially the judge was like, well, obviously she needs something more. So they ended up sending me away for a year. So I don't remember exactly how this happened because it was so long ago. It was literally almost 10 years ago by now, but I had a warrant for my arrest because I wasn't going to probation I wasn't doing anything and so I knew they were going to send me away so I was kind of just like staying with friends as long as I could because I really did not want to go away I was staying with my boyfriend at the time and I remember like the cops were constantly showing up to his house like his mom was constantly like is Brie here is Brie here like she needs to turn herself in you know all this stuff and it was literally like two weeks I was like missing and nobody knew where I was and I just got sick of hiding and not being able to do anything, not being able to go anywhere, not being able to talk to my family. So I ended up calling my mom and having her <clears throat> turn me in. So she came and picked me up and we went back to the house and we ate and had dinner. And then she brought me to the police station and was like, this is the girl you've been looking for. And they didn't know what to do with me honestly they were like oh okay they ended up bringing me to this juvie in like this next city over and it was literally like a kid's jail like you walk in they're buzzing the doors open for you to go in you have to take a shower in front of somebody and you have to like push this button on the wall and the the water is freezing cold and it only lasts like 10 seconds and you have to use like this hand soap off the wall and wash your entire body it was horrible and then they had to like mark my tattoos and stuff so that they knew how to identify me if I ever went missing. And then they locked me in a room because it was late at night when I got there. So they put me in my room and they literally locked me in like this metal jail cell looking thing with like this tiny little mattress, like a sheet for a blanket, a metal toilet, a metal sink. Like it was literally like a jail cell. That was like the first time that I ever really sat there and was like what did I do and then the next day I had court so that they could figure out where they were going to put me because I literally had just turned myself in they just kind of put me there because they didn't know what to do with me so I went to court the next day and they ended up sending me to this place in the middle of nowhere where I couldn't run away and if I did they would let you because there's literal coyotes and wolves and everything all over the place so they were kind of just like run if you want to because you probably won't make it far and so I ended up going there I was there for like three weeks I ended up writing the judge a big long note because I was like I don't want to go away for a year again I read the note at court and they were like we've been through this before you're obviously going to keep doing this you obviously need some permanent placing here so they ended up placing me for a year so I lived in this like group home. It was co-ed. There were girls and guys and from all different ages. It was literally like this foster care, but it was literally 
like this loop and there were cottages all around the loop and each cottage had like specific problems or whatever so like my cottage each cottage was like sp only specific to gender and stuff so like my cottage was all girls but it was like all girls that were like bad and then there was another cottage for girls that weren't so bad they were trying to put me in that one because I'm really not that bad once I was like once I got to placement and stuff and I was doing like everything I needed to do they were like why are you here and yeah so they tried to put me in the one that was like for girls that aren't so bad but it was full so they ended up putting me in the other one which it honestly wasn't too bad I ended up having a girlfriend in there and yeah I learned a lot after I had gotten out of placement I ended up moving in with a family friend because I knew that I couldn't go back to my mom's house because it was just a very toxic environment with all the abuse that was going on there even though it really hurt my mom I ended up going and moving out near Albany to live with family friends for the remainder of my high school when I got out of placement I was in 10th grade and so when I'd moved out to Albany I was like like because I'd moved from so many schools like insane amounts like I lived with my mom up until sixth grade and then seventh grade I moved in with my dad for like a half of the year the other half of the year or like two months later I moved back in with my mom and then two weeks later I moved back in with my dad and it was just constantly like that from seventh grade until ninth grade when I started skipping school. So because I moved so much, I was like, I cannot do this for another two years, like a new school, new people. Like it's so hard for me to like fit in and make new friends. And it's just very uncomfortable for me. And I suck at it. I'm really shy and I'm not outspoken whatsoever and it's really hard to like put yourself out there and make friends when you're just really shy and so basically I told my guidance counselor when I got to school I was like is there any way I could double up because I literally cannot do this another two years and she ended up making it happen so I ended up doubling up my next year and I graduated early in 2018. I literally turned my life around like crazy like I went from skipping school in ninth grade to graduating early from high school which all of my friends were like how the heck did you do that because they were all going to school like every single year and doing what they needed to do and yeah I don't know I guess I did kind of luck out on that part but I worked really hard that year and I got through it and I graduated which I'm super proud of I'm actually the first person in my family to graduate my parents didn't graduate my older sister didn't graduate my brother didn't graduate like literally nobody that I know besides like extended cousins and stuff have graduated so I'm the first one in my family my immediate family to graduate so I definitely pride myself in that while I was in placement I had the highest average of the whole high school because I literally was just like the best kid like they literally I had a job on campus nobody else really had a job I could walk to and from my job by myself which everyone else had to have a staff member walk with them just in case they ran off or whatever like I was like extremely trusted in that placement I actually got this award while I was in placement and I love this award so much because it was really hard for me to get so a couple of my teachers had asked me if I would be interested in going to Albany and lobbying in front of senators and assemblymen and basically asking for money for kids in foster care for college and things like that. I was very hesitant at first because I was like, I'm, I was 15 years old at that time. I was like, I'm 15. Like, why do they want to hear from me? And basically they were like, you know, it, it tugs at the heartstrings of these people because they can hear it from like a child's voice. Like, you're a child that wants to go to college eventually and wants to have a future and it's not fair for people who are in foster care to not be eligible to be able to get those things because of their circumstances or because they didn't have a family or things like that so i ended up agreeing it was supposed to be me and a couple other people that were going and i was the only one that ended up going literally just me and my teacher's son who drove me all the way to albany and i had to talk to these senators and assemblymen with the Fostering Youth Success Alliance and 
we actually ended up getting $4.2 million from them in order to fund college for students of foster care. So that was like amazing. When I found that out, the director of the placement that I was in, like the director, like the big boss, he ended up taking me out with all of my staff members to like this super fancy restaurant in the city. And we had like a super nice lunch. He got me a $50 Barnes and Noble gift card and he literally made this certificate for me and I want to find it and show you guys because I love it and I want to get it framed and hung up because I'm very proud of it. All right, so it's in here. I haven't taken it out because I literally don't want anything to happen to it and it's really nice and I love it. But this is what it looks like. That's the placement I was in. They literally just like made it super official for me. I literally love this thing because it just shows that I was brave and like I didn't want to do it, but I was like, you know what, whatever, I'm going to do it anyways. And it was really important. And I'm actually in college now and I'm able to use this money to go to college. So I'm just super grateful that I did. And he actually made this for me three days after my 16th birthday. Yeah, I had to celebrate my 16th birthday in placement as well. Lovely. That was honestly one of the best birthdays I'd had. And it was only because I really got to experience how family is really just like everything. So it was obviously my 16th birthday. I woke up in placement. You could get like phone calls in placement, but they would only allow you like a certain amount a day because like, or everyone would just want to be on the phone all the time. And you can only be on the phone for like 10 minutes. And so I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm not going to call my family because I want them to call me because it's my birthday, you know, and say happy birthday. You know, I was thinking of you. I know it's your birthday. And so I'm sitting there all day. I don't receive a single call. Like I don't receive a call from my dad. I don't receive a call from my stepmom. I don't receive a call from <clears throat> my mom. I don't receive a call from my stepdad, my sisters literally nobody so I'm like super depressed all day I'm just like damn like nobody cares about me and so I'm sitting there I was playing a game in the rec room with my girlfriend at the time and so I see what looks like my mom's car pulling up out front and I'm like that's weird because one she didn't tell me she was coming for a visit two none of my staff members know that she's coming for a visit so if you don't know they get denied so I was like this is weird and so I go up to one of my staff members and I'm like I think my mom is here and they're just like what and so my mom comes up to the door and they're just like surprise happy birthday and I literally just like start crying like bawling because I was so surprised I was not expecting them to show up like, I was just expecting a phone call, and literally my entire family showed up. Well, my mom and my sisters, and my sister's boyfriend at the time, and it was literally, like, the best day ever. I could not stop crying. I was so surprised, and it was, it was the best surprise of my life. My mom had set up this surprise, like, a week or two in advance, so all the staff members knew that she was coming, and I just had no clue. So, props to my mom for throwing that surprise party for me, because even though... I had to turn 16 in placement. It was still one of the best birthdays to this day. Well, yeah, thanks for listening to that crazy story. If you guys like these story times, there's literally so many things that I could tell you. If you guys like this video, make sure you guys give it a thumbs up because it does help my video. Make sure you guys subscribe and make sure you guys hit that bell notification so that you guys get notified when I post another video.